New Jersey's always been a hellscape. If we can survive here, we can survive COVID-19, coronavirus, whatever it is. It's a lot. Biblical stuff. There's earthquakes. We got a plague. I hear there's locusts in Africa. I'm kind of thinking to myself, you know what? We've had a good run. And of all the times that we can't go to church, we should be on our knees praying. Father Alphonse, I kind of questioned his hygiene anyway. There was no way in hell, sorry, that I was taking the Eucharist from his hand to my mouth. We all need to maybe just take a nice, deep breath just as long as you're not standing too close to anybody else and i'm very happy to have our next guest on the show today uh she's an actress a writer a sketch comic with her alter ego is connie big balls bumbaloni that could be found on youtube and facebook and all over she is amanda bruton it's bruton right it's bruton you got it right bruton. Let's try well done yes i imagine most people like bruton or something yeah, like people that. say like Bruton or they automatically become dyslexic and they say Burton. Like so many people have said Burton. Um, people have asked me, they're like, oh, are you related to Tim Burton? And I'm usually in a place where like, I'm like, do you think if I was related to Tim Burton, I'd be here, you know? <laughs> like, <laughs> so you're, uh, you're in New York City right now, right? Uh, yeah, like, I live in Queens. So you're in, like I'm on Long Island, but I feel like you guys, closer to the city or more in the hotbed. Obviously right now, yeah. uh, Long Island is the hotbed and New York is the hotbed. How are you dealing with the quarantine these days? I'm doing okay. Uh, I'm baking bread, which is shocking. And you, you don't know me, but honestly, like I can't even make <laughs> eggs. So the fact that I've decided to make bread is like people are like, what the hell is happening over there? And I mean, I shouldn't even say baking bread. I don't, and I didn't even realize that this has become a joke. I thought I was being original and I'm like, oh, I'm going to make bread. And then I go onto social media and it turns out that like every basic white woman from age 25 <laughs> to 45 is fucking home. Like, do you, or do you care about cursing on your No, show? you can, you can curse. Sure. It's fine to okay. curse on here. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, is baking bread and they have their sourdough starter and, and whatever. And the first loaf I made was ugly as shit and it tasted good. It was underbaked, but I'm, I'm going to try again. So that's what I've been focusing on, um, <laughs> but, which is just, it's just really rich. Cause I'm just, I'm not really one. I'm not really one that's uh, one to cook. Hello, my chefs and foodies. It's Connie Big Balls Bumbaloni, your favorite cook in the kitchen from North Jersey. You got the meat, you got the sauce, and I call it sauce. Yeah, I know some families like to call it gravy. I don't know where they're from. You're in the supermarket, a can of tomato sauce. It says sauce. Does it say tomato gravy? No, it does not. I rest my case. Thank you very much. Well, obviously, we're in a crazy time period where a lot of uh bad things are happening but there is the positive to it and and such as baking bread and you know yes, just having the bread. time <laughs> we're going back to colonial times <laughs> because <laughs> there was a moment where um my uh, my wife and i were i was like i don't want to go to the laundromat because the last time i went to the laundromat it was packed there were people on top of each other and i was just like nope i was like we're doing all of our fucking hand washing in our sink it's going to be colonial times but with netflix that's what it's going to be there you um, go. so um and we have a uh we have a seven month old baby so it's nice to get her downstairs sometimes too and so she we're like hey these are what other human beings look like. Because right. right now, you've got two moms and that's it. And I'm sure she's like bored to shit with us. So. <laughs> but I was going to say, like, well, for, for you being a comedian-minded sketch artist, you, uh, you must have material every day from, from <laughs> having the, the baby and, and raising totally. her in this environment. Yeah. Well, it's funny that you say that. Um, well, one thing is, I think we're we're both we're pretty social people, um, my wife and I, and we were kind of saying that this quarantine, like once we had Frankie, then we were suddenly like you're just home way more often. You're not going out. People are coming to you, um, and we're ordering out a lot, like not cooking a lot, the whole thing. You were so you know you're so focused on the baby. So I was like this isn't actually that different than what it was, you know, beforehand, because we weren't really seeing our friends as much. Um, and in a way, I feel like there was a, you know, when you first, I don't know if you have kids, but, um, but like when you first have a, a baby, everybody wants to come over and see the baby. And so it felt like those first couple months, 
our social calendar was like, we were busier and seeing people more than we had ever seen people before. And I was like, I'm so, fr I appreciate it. I love it. It's so wonderful to be loved and for Frankie to be loved, but I'm so fucking sick and tired of seeing people and having yeah. to host. And so now I'm like, oh shit, be careful what you wish for because now no one can come over right. ever. <laughs> so, <laughs> I know. Um, yeah. So, but uh, I am, um, I'm working on, I have a solo show that I did um, in the left. I did it a few times these last couple of years. I did it down at the duplex, which is in the West Village. And I did it at this place called the Lori Beachman, which is in Midtown. Um, and it was, that show was definitely like cabaret storytelling, uh, you know, bits of stand up thrown in there. I want to say storytelling because it's not stand up, but um, a lot, it was definitely comedy. Uh, and I did that show a couple of times, and now I'm thinking about writing another show called Prego My Lesbo, <laughs> all about, <laughs> like, the choice to become a parent, going through the fertility process as a gay couple, an older couple at that, because let me tell you something, the minute that you turn, like, 30, you're suddenly, like, a geriatric pregnancy. They're like, <laughs> oh, well you're old, your eggs are shriveled up, what can we do, you know? Right. And so I had been thinking about writing a show about the whole experience even before all of this shit happened. So now I'm like, oh, damn, I need to get writing. <laughs> yeah, I think you got, it'd be, this would be great. Now, um, with the baby, so uh, did you have the baby? Which Who carried I it? I had the baby, yeah, I carried. Um, and that was, you know that's a choice right because you, you got two ovens basically right is the right. way is, is the way a gay man explained it to me one time he's like well at least you have two ovens we have no oven right. um, like, what oh got it um but uh i was kind of like yeah no i want to i want to do it i want to do i want to have the whole the whole experience and for good for good or for bad and it is it is wild like how uh how much your body changes and how you're not in, in, you know, you have no control over your emotions. Like there were days when I was pregnant, I would just be like <laughs> crying for no, and I'm not a big crier and I'm for no reason. And like, you know, you're crying, you're farting, like it's all happening at the same time. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so I was the one who, who ended up carrying. And um, if we were decide, if we did decide to have a second one, I think my wife, I'd be like, okay, your turn. But that's <laughs> that, unclear. Having two Three ovens, yeah. On that one. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's awesome. Maritza, can I get a Coke? I don't give a shit about the aspartame, whatever. Dolores, do I look good? Do I need a mount more? Can you see my muffin top? I think that could be aspirational. What's wrong with a muffin top? It's so weird because there's so much unknown right now. Like it really is the big thing is we just don't know when or how quickly we're going to come out of this um yeah it's definitely some crazy times and that's why you know i think in, in a way it, it's um people like characters like Connie big balls bumbaloni could could emerge and, and uh, i know she's right. been around for a while and, and yeah. but but now <laughs> i think this uh uh the character in the quarantine uh is is really something special uh, oh thank you <laughs> some people are calling this the new normal it's the wave of the future i take issue with that having to just facetime and do all of these zip zap zoom meeting i don't think so this is not normal <laughs> tell us all a little bit about uh connie big balls bumbaloni so she is um, inspired by my mom's side of the family. They are they are the Italian Americans from Jersey, um, mainly around my aunt B, um, my mom's sister, and um, she is just you know she's one of those people who's kind of like a legend in our community and our family. Tells you like it is, tells you what to do, but with love. She's somebody who is very Catholic, but yet all of the homosexuals are going to her house to come out of the closet. You know what I mean? <laughs> so it's just like that constant, um, that constant uh, dichotomy of a character. And, um, and I always, you know, I think she's hilarious and brilliant. And so I was like, all right. And she's also like, when are you going to write a show about me? So I was like, okay. And so Connie kind of just came out of that. It was, um, I mean, it was years ago before I was really creating, I was just starting to create my own content. 
and it was a contest for like two minutes of creative con of, of comedic content so I was like all right you know I had this idea for you know a broader character a broader version of B of my aunt B and Connie is also like just a broader version of me too like I'm not I'm not the Jersey girl who wore you know the big long acrylic nails but I always kind of wanted to be <laughs> There are some upsides to this whole thing. My husband is sleeping in this spare room. I haven't barely even seen him in the last couple of weeks. He's such a crazy germaphobe. He either sends me a text message. Can I get a pan of lasagna for dinner tonight? So things really haven't changed. I work on it with my my friend and collaborator, James Michael. And what I think is what, what I think is really great is how he edits it. Um, just like those very quick jump cuts and um, he's just able to make things he was able to sort of just met, get the tone and get the timing and he makes something that i think or hope is funny funnier um so our collaboration has really been key and um and so it's a type of thing for until the quarantine where it was like every couple months i'd be like all right let's do something about christmas let's do something about the beach you know beach etiquette and then with this it was kind of like god this it feels like Connie needs to talk about quarantine and being that we're all like stuck at home like maybe we're checking in once a week and and exper you know we've always just sort of experimented with it is it going to be like a three minute video an eight minute video and so right now I feel like nobody has really even though everyone's sitting home with nothing to do they have no attention span right. so, <laughs> so trying to do these like shorter one to two minute videos you know yeah I, I think they're great and, and I think like, you know, when watching them, you could definitely see it, your alter ego um, kind of flourishing, like, like you, you know, and, and that you're channeling somebody. It's still in it. Some people, they're getting a lot of stuff done. They're doing spring cleaning. They're Marie Kondoing the house. Why you gotta be so freaking productive, right? Some people, they need to stay busy. And for other people, they need to sit on the couch and binge watch quality television. <laughs> when when writing sure. these, the, the writing is really crafty, man. I, I, I really like the jokes and, and uh, kind of the tone of, of Connie, like with the, which talks about the priest and she doesn't think he's clean. There's no way I'm taking the Eucharist. <laughs> those kind of lines are like gold. How do you, like, <laughs> right, you right. those off the top of your head or you're really channeling or how's that? I mean, that's incredible. So it's always been a mix of where I write everything down. Um, and then what ends up in the final, but then when we're shooting it, I also improvise a lot. And so I would say what, un, what, what, what we get in the final cut is probably a mix of both, where I've had the ideas and I have some jokes sort of crafted out and then I'll just kind of go, 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 go. And sometimes the best stuff is the shit that just comes flying out of my mouth right. out of nowhere. Right. Um, <laughs> and then other times we're like, wait, where did you, what, where did you go? That was weird. And so, <laughs> um, but yeah, so it's usually a mix of improv and some, you know, sketch stuff that had been written down. Haven't you noticed over the last several years that people just don't talk to each other anymore? <laughs> That's why we need, no, we need comedy. We need comedy, yeah. big balls, bumbaloni. We need to laugh. We need to find the positives in all of this, whether it's baking bread, raising ch exactly. our children, being together. We gotta find the blessings in this thing. And um, I think there's a lot of, of good that can come out of it, but there's also, you know, we know the, a lot of scariness too. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, and that, and for me, it's really been, you know, I talk about how Connie doing her vlogging is cathartic, but like, it's been cathartic for me, Amanda, <laughs> talking <laughs> in the third person, I think is a sign of insanity. Um, but, <laughs> but, um, but when I decided to do it, I was like, you know, it's been, it's been fun for me to be, you know, writing and filming the stuff and all of that and sharing it. And when I, when I've been seeing people say, you know, I needed to laugh today, so thank you for that. Like that's that is that's everything. Then then my job is done, you know, because I think we do need to. There needs to be some levity during times like this, um, while being respectful. But also, yeah, we need to re we need to be reminded to laugh because you scroll on social media and so much of it is like negative and doom and gloom. And I understand that that's the world we're living in right now. But um, but you got to laugh. You have when to you laugh. <laughs> well, I appreciate you taking the time, Amanda, to talk to me today uh, and, and go over all these things. Um, where can people find you and and find Connie and all that good stuff? Yeah, we um, Connie just launched her own YouTube channel, Confessions by Connie. Um, so you can find us there. 
we're in the we're in the midst of there's about god probably 10 or 11 episodes that we did that was that were all of those episodes have been living on my personal youtube channel so we're in the process of moving everything over but all of the new stuff particularly connie in quarantine is living on the new youtube channel so that's confessions by connie on youtube um you can find us on instagram at confessions by connie twitter and facebook yeah excellent well yeah. thank you so much everyone check her out uh amanda thank bruton you. And um, like crouton, but with a B. <laughs> you got it. You'll never forget it. <laughs> and uh, Connie Big Balls Bumbaloni will, will not let you down. Trust me, folks. Well, thanks again, Amanda. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me, Don. It's been a pleasure. <laughs> thing that they call Facebook Live. It is the most mundane, stupid freaking thing. Everybody thinks their life is so exciting and they have something super exciting to say. You don't. Nobody freaking cares.